G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Flashlight Crazy. Today I'm looking at the difference between TIR optic lenses in a thrower and reflector lenses or reflectors in a thrower. So it's not going to be a hugely long review because uh, I'm not going to go into details about these two lights. But what I wanted to do is basically grab two similar lights with similar distances and show the difference between a reflector, which is in the uh, Javelot Pro 2, and a TIR, Total Internal Reflection Lens, which is in this Ace Beam L19. Stick around. All right, so it's not gonna be a crazy long video today. I just wanted to take two pretty epic throwers and show you the difference, uh, basically just the night shots difference between a reflector beam coming out of the Javelot Pro 2 and a total internal reflection, which is coming out of this uh, Ace Beam L19. Now, I chose these two lights because they are, uh, uh, out of all the uh, throwers that I've got at the moment, they are the most similar when it comes to a TIR versus a reflector. So the L19 max output is uh, 2,200 lumens and the max distance is, a, is 1,083 meters. So that is a beast of a light. This is running an SFT40 underneath this uh, TIR lens, whereas the Olight is running an SFT70 down there and the maxed output here is 2,500 lumens with a max throw of 1,050 meters. So there it is there. So 2,500 versus 2,200, 1,050 meters versus 1,083 meters. And then we've got 271,400 candela over 293,222 candela. So uh, now just a very quick uh, spec check. So the Olight Javelot Pro, if you press and hold, it'll come on in your last output and then single click is just gonna cycle. So you've got low of 15 lumens, which will last for 12 days, medium of 150 lumens, which will last for 32 and a half hours, high of 600 lumens, which you'll get for 420 minutes, uh, and then it'll drop down to 25% of that for another 42 minutes, and then turbo. That's your 2,500 lumens for five minutes, then it drops down to 40% of that for 180 minutes, and then drops down to 24% of that for 27 minutes. Press and hold, turns it off. That is the extent of the UI of this light. And your tail cap, half press gets you to low, 15 lumens, full press gets you to turbo, 2,500 lumens. Now, the Ace Beam side switch, single click turns it on, last output and then press and hold is gonna cycle. So low is 100 lumens, which you'll get for 30 hours and five minutes. Press and hold is medium one, which is 300 lumens, which you'll get for nine hours and 45 minutes. Press and hold again is medium two, which is 630 lumens, which you'll get for four hours and eight minutes. Press and hold again is high, which is 1200 lumens, which you'll get for an hour and 38 minutes. If I try to cycle, it'll go back down. So double press gets me to turbo, which is 2,200 lumens I'll have for a minute and 50 seconds. Then it'll drop down to 1,600 lumens, which I'll get for 10 minutes. And then it'll drop down to 1,200 lumens, which I'll get for an additional hour and a half. Now, this light also has one, two, three strobe, uh, and that is just crazy 1,100 lumens, which you'll get for two hours and 47 minutes. Single click, turns it off single click, turns it back on, uh, and there we have it into the last output. And your tail switch is momentary or constant on in turbo mode. So love the fact that this gives you a turbo mode uh, from the tail switch every time. Now, if we were gonna compare these in hunting lights, um, I guess firstly, the Ace Beam screams out as a better hunting light. Now, I'm not a hunter, just full disclosure, I'm not a hunter, but the Ace Beam screams better hunting light to me uh, because of its size. So that, it just it just looks more comfortable on, on a weapon to mount this as opposed to mount this enormous thing. See that? But then again, I don't hunt. I don't know if, uh, you know, you don't really notice the difference, but I do know that uh, the Olight weighs 423 grams, which includes the battery, so that's everything here. 
whereas the Ace Beam weighs 284 grams with the battery included. So that is a bit of a difference as well in terms of weight. But what we're really talking about today is what's better, the, the total internal reflection or the reflector beam. So as you can see, the total internal reflection, in fact, I'll just turn this off for a second, the total internal reflection, wow, that was silly. Okay, we're all good. Uh, so the total internal reflection beam has... It is, it is a concentrated beam to just go straight in, uh, ahead, right? However, I want you to take notice, and you'll see it better outside, but I want you to take notice of around here. So look over there and look over there at the wall, and then watch how dark it gets when I turn it off. So see that, and now back on, off. I know there's a lot of light bouncing around, but maybe if I turn this light off, Let's see how it goes now. There we go. So I know there's light bouncing around. So don't, uh, don't think I don't know that. I definitely know that. But what I'm trying to illustrate is that this light actually puts out a lot of peripheral light. It, it's not like an LEP where it just goes straight and there's nothing surrounding it. There is a lot of peripheral light coming out of this. It's just not as clean as you'll get when you do a reflector beam because the reflector beam here has a very distinct uh, spill area. And that spill area, anything inside that spill area is going to be seen. Anything outside that spill area is not going to be seen. There's a very distinct cutoff. And what that means is, if you're inside the spill, bang, I can see you. But then look at the lights outside of the spill or when I move it back out. That If that was pitch black, they become basically invisible. So this light doesn't bounce light around. A reflector beam is not going to bounce light around outside of the spill area. It just doesn't. That's not what it's designed to do. Whereas the total internal reflection, it does bounce light everywhere. It's not as clean as having a reflector beam. It's certainly not as distinct, but there is a lot of peripheral light which surround this beam in a total internal reflection uh, lens. Now let's just look there. So that's what it looks like. If I can just give you, so that's what it looks like. It kind of, so the LED is all the way down there at the bottom. And then, and then, so you've got the LED all the way down there, right? All the way down there. Then you've got this like reflector lens that is designed to push all or 90% of the light out of this into a very, uh, very nice secure circle. It focuses all of the light into that, okay? Great. But this outer lens bit here, that is where the peripheral light comes out. And so when the peripheral light comes out, it's very messy, it's not clean, but there there is a lot of it. And that's what I mean. When you, when you look in the night shots, you will see that there's a lot of light surrounding this light. It's not just uh, it's not just a, a single beam like an LEP light, for example. All right, so let's take them outside and see how they do. Uh, as I said, this isn't a comparison head to head between the Olight Javelot Pro 2 and the Ace Beam L19. This is a basically a night shot difference to show you the difference between a total internal reflection lens and a uh, and a reflector beam. So let's go outside, then we'll come back for some final thoughts and prices and where to buy. See you in a sec. All right, reflector versus TIR. So there is the Javelot Pro 2, and that is the using the reflector technology. <clears throat> so distinct hotspot, but more importantly, distinct spill. So that's what you're gonna get with reflector, distinct spill. Now let's go. Now, there is TIR. So, what would you say? You'd say, okay, so I'm, I'm seeing obviously a thinner, more direct beam, uh, but still peripheral light. That's, that's the important thing to note here, is there is still peripheral light, just not like that. <clears throat> so distinct spill, Whereas tight beam peripheral light. Now, what about the hotspots here? 
I mean, maybe the Javelot Pro 2 is a bad example because it's so brilliant, but hotspots are still quite similar, to be honest. SFT 70 here, SFT 40 here. And the SFT 40 is doing its job. I mean, all the way back there at those trees, I can see, you know, very clearly. And then that, I think I can see a little bit more clearly. The Javelot Pro 2 is, is it the ultimate? I mean, I haven't found anything yet that's kind of, that's a good, good comparison to compare the, the performance of it. The Javelot Pro 2 is very impressive. And there is the Ace Beam again. So TIR optic lens here. Love the peripheral light. There's so much light coming out of that. Um, you know, the hotspot, it's very clear what I'm pointing it at. But then the Javelot Pro 2, it has a more distinct hotspot, brighter hotspot, and some more usable spill. Oh, but here's something I'm noticing, actually. The, the peripheral light in the uh, Ace Beam for the total internal reflection is a lot softer. Whereas with the Javelot Pro 2, it's a lot more blinding. And the uh, peripheral light is coming all the way back to me from the uh, Ace Beam. Whereas with the Javelot, it starts a few meters ahead of me. <clears throat> so that is also something to note uh, with the difference between TIR here and reflector here. All right, TIR, reflector. All right, see ya. All righty, so uh, I guess, what did you prefer? Uh, look, what I really, really noticed from the, from the night shots is with the total internal reflection, there's, there's more emphasis on the hotspot and less on a defined spill. However, what I noticed with the L19 is that the spill is... It's a lot softer, but it's there. It's kind of like, it's it's hard to explain, but it's kind of like peripheral light as opposed to a distinct cutoff uh, spill area. So one thing I really noticed about the about the L19, uh, its, its entire beam profile, is that when you've got the hotspot aimed at something, right? Your focus is on that. But when you do look to the side, or even quite a bit to the side of the, the, the uh, main beam, there's a lot of light surrounding it, and it's and it's not a it's not a distinct light. Uh, there's no distinct light cutoff, and I actually found that there's more light coming out of the peripherals in this light than there was in the Javelot, and the reason for that was the 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 distinct cutoff in the Javelot. So. The distinct, there it is, so I'll just try, okay, so the distinct cutoff of light, where there's light, no light, that is, it actually offered less. Now, everything inside that circle was obviously very, very visible, of course, but that circle of light was not as big as the peripheral light in the L19. Now, the Javelot Pro 2 is kind of in a league of its own in that it it definitely uh, is one of, if not the most powerful uh, you know, handheld throwers, basically. It's just superb. So the hotspot is just absolutely amazing, very clear, all that sort of stuff goes a long, long way. But in terms of the peripheral spill, I certainly prefer the peripheral light coming out of the uh, the L19 than the Javelot because there's no distinct line. It's just a whole lot of light around you. So you can even see all the way up to like me. If I, when I had this on and looked down at my feet, there was light. Whereas when I had this on, uh, the light didn't start for several meters. So that was the biggest difference I noticed in the uh, in the night shots. Now, both of these lights are available at lightshop.com.au right now. The Ace Beam L19 comes in at about 2 to 220, I think. Whereas the uh, Olight Javelot Pro 2 comes in at 289. So what I'll do is I'll link them both in the description separately, and I will put some discount codes as well, okay? I reckon that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, stay cool and stay safe. See ya.